Hi there, welcome to this course on data visualization and analysis with AWS QuickSight and Microsoft Power BI. My name is Harshit and I'm instructor for this class. Here in this course, we are going to learn about various visualization charts, data analysis, finding insights from the data and much more. Using Microsoft Power BI, you will learn to create various kinds of charts such as bar chart, line chart, pie chart, donut or ring chart. You will also learn to create tree map chart, table and matrices, ribbon chart, waterfall charts and much more. You will also learn how you can use these charts to find insights from the data and create a visualization dashboard and BI report. You will also learn to create actions, buttons, uh, drill down dashboard and much more in Power BI. After that, you will learn about AWS QuickSight where you can prepare your data set and create analytics dashboard and charts on AWS cloud computing platform. Here you will learn about data preparation and data cleaning where you can prepare your data before creating visualization charts. So you can uh, modify or customize your data set. You can filter out some components that you don't need. You can create custom columns using calculated fields, filters and excluded plot. You will learn how to create these things. You will also learn about creating pivot table, map visualization and conditional formatting in the visualization fields for AWS QuickSight. So if you are curious to learn these data analytics skills in AWS QuickSight and Microsoft Power BI, start learning right now. See you in the class. Hi friend, welcome to this lesson where you are going to learn about creating a bar chart in Power BI. So let's start with this. We are going to just create a simple bar chart and for that we need a data set. So just go to get data and choose a format that you have. Here I am using an Excel file. So we will be importing this Excel file for grocery price data set. Uh, just se select this table and hit the load option if you want to load otherwise you can Go to transform for changing the values of the columns and so on. You're learning this thing in the later exercise. So here uh, we got this data set and here we got three different columns and we can go to the visualizations to create a chart. So on the first row, we got all the stack, stack clustered, bar chart and column charts. So just select any one. Here I'm just using a stack bar chart and just uh, move the values to different values say date to axis uh, move product column to legend and then price to values so here we got three data points so this just create a, a simple bar chart here we got four different bars um, and we can change it to represent based on a different time frame say on the annual basis we got one chart on the quarterly basis we got two charts and for the monthly basis if you want to represent you can get this thing and there are four different bars and different colors and the light blue the dark blue orange and the violet each representing different category of values or the legions you can go to the format tab to change a few values say if you want to change the value of legion you can increase the size of legion simply to make them visible to your audience so here we got four different products bread grapes milk and oranges so we got the price data of these four food products uh, distributed over month and we can see uh, the price change of each product uh, the simple bar chart so we can sh simply note here the price of the milk has been increasing over the past few months and the price of oranges have gradually dropped so the oranges are cheaper in the later months and the milk is more expensive so we can decide more things here we can change the title as well just try the price variation over time you can edit the title you can change the values you got multiple formatting options just go through them if you want to change the colors of uh, individual bars you can change 
say if you want to change the color of bread to lighter tone of blue or say any different color uh, yellow green purple anything like that you can change the color of grapes uh, anything any category say change the color of milk to pink and uh, change the color of oranges to yellow you can change anything just make oranges in the orange color and change the color of uh, say grapes to a different color you can change the value of individual colors you can change the size for the text you can change the data colors you can change uh, different formatting options you got you got x-axis y-axis with the different charts you got uh, different kinds of formatting options say a pie chart may have a different formatting option than a bar chart and so on so you got a, a variety of charts and bar chart would be the first thing that you should try to create it simply represents uh, four different categories and the price change over the time frame so bar chart is very useful so this is how you can create a simple bar chart if you have a data in different sources say web data you can use uh, you will learning this thing in the coming lessons you will also learn about importing other data sets you can use a database you can use uh, csv files you can use a live data from the web that i mentioned you will be learning to create uh, different charts uh, pie charts tables tree maps funnel chart scatter plot and other charts so this is how you create a simple bar chart just try to create this thing on your own keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a line chart in power bi so let's start with this let us first uh, create a line chart using a visualization tab and just use uh, the columns from the sheets here i'm just dropping a date column to the axis product to legends and price to values so price are the measures that are in numerical values you can find the sigma sign between that column and you can drop it into the values tab and here we got this simple line chart we can go to the format tab and go to some other options like data labels and we can change the size of this line we can change the size of the text we can perform multiple edits like uh, we can go to the shapes and just change it from the solid line to a dashed line or a dotted line so if you want a dashed line you can use it to change uh, the shapes of your line or you can use a dotted line to change the value of your dotted line otherwise just keep it uh, solid if you want a straight line without any spaces or dots okay so sometimes you want a projection you may have different columns and you want a different kind of projection you want a dotted line as well as a a solid line you can use it you can change the stroke width you can either increase it to have a solid stroke you can decrease it you can change other values you can make it a step so when there is a change of value your line chart will form as a step otherwise it will be constant parallel to x-axis but uh, line charts are generally defined with slopes so if you want to have a slope line chart you can set it default and turn the step option off otherwise if you want to show in the step manner it will be a new kind of visualization for some people uh, who just don't want a simple line chart they want to add some step maybe you may want to add a bar chart or some more insights you can just use a step chart you can change the title you can change your uh, other text the colors uh, the legends and anything else just uh, say increase the size of the title because by default it is quite small you can make it large edit the title you can write your own text you can just do any other edits so this is how you can create a line chart uh, just go to the format tabs for multiple options say uh, here uh, we got a uh, step option and uh, with the sh different shapes that we can identify uh, this option was not available in the bar charts or the pie chart 
because a bar chart cannot have a step bar okay each individual bar is a different thing and step functionality is only available in the line charts so in the format tab of different charts you will have different options see here it is um, you have to practice by creating multiple charts of different kind and just refer to different formatting options you will learn how to format each individual charts and this is how you can read a chart uh, when you uh, just hover around to the chart uh, with the tooltip if you want to add a tooltip you can also drop something to the tooltip otherwise uh, it will just generate the default values and here you see this thing and this is how you create a simple line chart for some data you don't want to represent it with a bar chart you can represent it with a line charts or a different chart so here we have just taken the same data set created one bar chart and one line chart and now you can decide which chart you want to use for your visualization in some scenarios bar chart would be better sometimes line chart would be better you can use a combination of more charts or create your own custom charts in power bi just keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating a pie chart in power bi so let's start with this here let us just uh, import a data set here i'm just importing a billing data set in the excel file and just hit the load button when you want to load the data so it consists of multiple columns with different uh, data values and we'll be using some of them to create a pie chart so just go to the top visualization tab and here you can see a small icon for pie chart just single click it to create this chart once it is created you can expand it and just start dropping the values so here let's drop a product category into legends because it will be represented into categorical forms next use a measure such as order quantity and drop it into the values you can take profit or other numerical value that are represented with a sigma sign here i'm just simply using the order quantity you can add more information into tooltips and detail sections otherwise just go to the format tab to format different things here let's uh, change the font or you can change the font size say increase the font size of the product categories you can change the font how they are represented sometimes uh, if you are creating a visualization you may uh, require to have a singular kind of format in the standards that way you can use otherwise uh, you can use the default power bi fonts if it doesn't matter to you also if you are using in a different language other than english you can use a font type for that language like uh, hindi tamil telugu chinese mandarin japanese uh, arabic or a different language of your choice you can use a different formatting next uh, you can change uh, the label positions uh, you can go to the details tab and change the size of the detailed text say here uh, we got the label position we can uh, just change the position by default it is represented outside the pie chart you can see uh, the numerical values the percentage and we can just make it uh, appear inside so just go to the label position and you can change it to represent inside outside anywhere you want you can increase the size of the label and how it is presented so this is how if you have a big pie chart it is better to use the inside tab you can also change the label uh, style what information is represented say if you want to show only percentage you can show the percentage if you want to show uh, display the category you can show the category if you want to display a combination of data values category or percentage you can do so or you can simply show all the details labels so here i'm just going with a category and a percentage sales in each category 
and next you can change the color of your data uh, data points here uh, we have got multiple categories such as food technology medicines cosmetics and toys uh, let's change the color uh, say convert the food to orange and yellow or orange and technology to blue or a different color you can ch choose uh, your own favorite color you can use a combination of colors if you are a person who are who is uh, having a background in design or creative field you can use the color wheel or the color palettes if you want to use uh, otherwise just take a color of your choice if you want your uh, diagram to look appealing you can use the concept of color theory that is in practice with the designing persons it is not that difficult just simple thing just a combination of monochromatic or other color schemes this is how with the color data colors you can also change the layout or the style of this entire workspace of power bi and just go to different formatting options such as title you can change the change how your title is displayed you can increase the title size you can keep it centered you can do them some of the formatting options are just common along with uh, different charts such as the title the data colors and other things in different charts and some formatting options are unique say with the pie chart you got this option to show the label position of your text inside the pie chart outside the pie chart it was not visible in the line chart because you cannot simply write a text inside the line you have to write just above the line and so on it will be visible with the bar charts and the ring charts sometimes it won't be visible and here just uh, change the styling of the workspace just go to view and change it to dark mode if you want to have a dark mode you can choose your own style just like a powerpoint presentation will have a different color scheme you can change okay so it will automatically change the data colors of your chart as well if you choose a different color scheme otherwise just go to default normally people go with either of this black or the dark mode or the white mode the default mode okay so you can choose a uh, combination of these things try creating your own visualizations don't worry it is quite simple to start just uh, take a simple data set and start practicing okay no need to worry about anything just give it a practice if you have any doubt feel free to ask in the q a sections uh, i will be happy to help you out in this situation so just practice this thing create your own pie charts you can create multiple pie charts or a combination of different charts together to create a dashboard you are learning more about uh, creating other charts and other things in power bi till then keep learning and keep moving ahead hey welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a donut chart or a ring chart in power bi so let's start with this so we have just created a pie chart in the previous lesson and here in order to create a new chart you can either create a new worksheet or you can just create multiple charts on the same worksheet so here i'm just creating this ring chart over the top of uh, this pie chart next to it and just reposition it and once you are done you can just drop uh, the values into legends and values uh, the alphabetic values all the categorical data can go to the legion it will be categorized or the numerical value or the measures can go into the values so i am using order quantity in values and product name into the legion and you can just go to the format tab after you have provided the values so here just format it a little bit we can change the size of the text we can just go to the data labels and go to label styles and choose this to represent with the category and percentage form we don't want the amount to display in this ring chart you can either uh, turn the legend on and off here uh, you can use uh, all kind of categorical data but to make uh, these two charts 
synchronized together the pi and the ring we just want to have these two information name of the category and percentage as these two charts are related because on the pie chart we have used the product category and here in the ring chart we are using subcategory so food is a category that can have a different subcategory fruits vegetables milk uh, and other things in a similar way uh, we can have the categorical and subcategorical segregation so these two charts are related and sometimes if you want to represent a story or uh, something some data we may require one or more charts together to create a dashboard so in order to show the stats or the order quantity by category we have the pie chart and if you want to deep dive into uh, what particular kind of food or the subcategory of food has a maximum order quantity you can refer to the ring chart otherwise in order to have an abstract view you can have um, this pie chart or with a detailed view you can have the ring chart so this is how uh, we can go with this in the pie chart we have put the data inside the label values and now we in the ring chart we put them outside you can change the colors of the data values and align it with the pie chart say with the pie chart we have the food sub food category in the yellow orange color zone and in the subcategory you can have a similar tone in order to, to make uh, these two two charts look similar or identical otherwise you can use a different color combination because a category will have fewer entities while the subcategories may have multiple entities or the larger number of entities so the colors should be distinguishable so in the previous lessons uh, be it line chart bar chart or the simple pie chart you learned how to create these individual charts and here you are not just learning how to create a ring chart you are learning how to combine it to present a story and make it aligned so in this way we can have two different charts to have a specific detail about the information uh, you can apply more features that are powered with uh, power bi such as drill down you can add filters later on you're learning everything in this course and here it is uh, it is simple just give it a try take a data set start creating different charts try to link them here i've just taught you how to create two different charts the pie chart and the ring chart in a similar way you can also represent the subcategories uh, with the bar chart or you can also show with the line chart but i believe uh, if you have fewer entities it is better to use line chart otherwise if you have got a lot of data a lot of subcategories here say if you have 20 subcategories understanding 20 lines on the bar on the line chart would be difficult so it is better to use a ring chart there even if you have a bar chart it would be difficult to have a different legend uh, there you need a legend but you still you can represent you can uh, use a different kind of chart you can turn the dark mode on and off you can use a different mode if you want to convey just create a combination of different charts so this is how you create a ring chart and combine it with a dashboard Try to create this thing on your own. Keep learning and keep practicing. Hello, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about creating a tree map chart in Microsoft Power BI. So let's start with this. Uh, earlier, we have created a pie chart and a ring chart for categories and subcategory. And uh, this time we are just going to create a tree map chart. So tree map chart is a simple chart, uh, which consists of rectangular. Th these are represented with rectangles. Uh, and the area for a particular category will show you the weightage so just realign here i'm just putting country column into the group and order quantity into the values so here we got two countries for our data set united states and canada so these are represented so as we can see here simply that the maximum orders were placed from united states and from from canada we have somewhat less number of orders but if you want to 
re, uh, realign these th three charts together or create a relationship between the, these three charts together uh, no need to worry these are automatically created if you create a single worksheet and create multiple charts using the similar data set it will be uh, interlinked so if you click on a particular category everything will be reflected so first of all just go to the format tab here you can do a few formatting you can increase the size as we have done with other charts uh, you may find some other formatting options you hear uh, this change the display unit from thousands to auto or anything if you want to change the display unit of numbers you can change you can change the color uh, you can change the labels or uh, data labels you can turn the legend on and off uh, so let's change the color here united states is represented with blue color and canada as red so just place them around uh, you can always readjust the charts as you like so you can just make this ring chart a little bit smaller and just increase the size of our tree map chart so it aligns perfectly well so here we got uh, three different charts so when we click on a particular option in any of the chart say in the tree map we click united states option uh, all other charts the pie chart and the ring chart will be updated so once we click united states as you can see uh, other charts are shrink this is a powerful animation in power bi so we can find in the united states maximum orders were placed for the food category uh, less proportion for medicines more proportion for cosmetics 100 percent of the cosmetics order were placed from united states so we can see that no cosmetic order was placed from canada and when you click over the canada you can find canadians tend to order more medicines than food so this is how you can drive the insights so once you click on a particular category you can either just select food and find uh, which country uh, have the maximum proportion of food or technology say just click on any of the category or subcategory uh, you can click anywhere on the chart to exit or say just select Canada here we find that uh, Canadians order less fruit as compared to uh, dairy products and vegetables and the uh, United States maximum number of food fruits were ordered from US so in the similar way this is a dummy data this is not the real data so don't worry this is not the difference between United States and Canada we are taking a subset of a uh, few peoples and this is a dummy data for practice okay so just select a particular category here we select uh, say fruits so you can see uh, United States have maximum order for fruits when compared to Canada uh, when you select medicines Canadians tend to buy more medicines than United States and this is how you drive the business insights so you have multiple data set you just don't need to read the tables and go through everything you can create multiple charts in an attractive manner so this is how it is it looks very attractive power bi makes it feel very attractive okay when you present this thing in a conference or with uh, teams or collaborators they will feel uh, amazed with this visuals so just use these charts and create amazing visuals just create a tree map and interact with other charts such as pi ring and line charts so keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson we are going to learn about creating a detailed tree map chart in power bi in the earlier lesson uh, you learned about creating a tree map chart and how you can use it as a filter and connect with uh, related charts from the same data set you can use it to identify various data trends in interactive charts so you also learn about linking these three charts together and using tree map or any other chart as a filter right now just create a detailed tree map chart we need a big chart so use a similar tree map and here we'll be using three data fields say first drop the country in the group as we have done previously next we take states into detail and order quantity into the values in the previous lesson we have used only the country value but here we also use the state value so you can see united states have the bigger chunk when compared to canada but within united states we have got multiple states 
uh, which states contributed more order quantity we can find with this tree map this is a detailed tree map and here we can identify various states not just the country so this is a complete chart in itself we don't need a, a pie chart or the ring chart for category sales that is a different purpose but here we are more inclined towards insights about particular state so this is how you can go to the format tab and take a little bit formatting you can increase the text size of uh, either the legend or the title or the categories so that way this will be highlighted you can change the color as usual you can just change the title size make it a little bit bigger because we want our title to be large when we have a big chart you can also use the pie chart or the ring chart for category sales as a small chart just over this big chart uh, we change the color of its countries say uh, blue to united states and light red to canada and here we got uh, different details when we select a particular state in a country united states or canada we get details on, of that particular state only okay so here uh, we got ontario quebec and different states from canada in the us we got texas california other states new york and much more states you can go to formatting tab to make more formatting options you can change the display mode you can increase the text size for different states earlier it was barely hardly visible now it is clearly visible but it is applicable uniformly uh, because the larger states uh, we want it to be readable but if you want to go into details you can add some information into the tooltip if you want otherwise when you hover around a particular state it will show you the complete name in the tooltip so here it is uh, just add some more formatting if you want and this is how you simply create a detailed tree map chart you can also create more subcategories but they must be related so here are all the states have a uh, country data so these were related if you put fruits vegetables and other subcategory information into country it would be little bit weird so take aligning information keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating tables and matrices in power bi so let's start with this the tables uh, generally represent data in two dimensional values and you can only add column in two tables of power bi so as you can see here you got only one option values you can add any column to the values be it uh, a measure or dimension alphabetic or numerical value you can use it so here just let me drop product category here you can add more uh, columns into this table anytime you want so we got formatting options we can change the size and appearance you can change the style to contrast alternative rows or have anything else later on we can just add uh, more columns such as order quantity and profit and after we have created this table you can also create a matrix both are different sometimes you can use either of them or you can combine both of them but uh, let me just tell you a difference between table and matrix table is simple 2d representation of data where you can only add column in power bi and matrices are similar to pivot table in excel if you have used microsoft excel previously uh, you may have used pivot table and in the pivot table we got the two dimensions but uh, we can add rows columns as well as values and it can be used for a drill down and you can apply drill down functionality very easily into matrices okay here you get the option to add rows columns and values and we can classify so in the table we got only values and in the matrix we got row column and values and it helps you access uh, deeper levels of hierarchy 
or a data set visually and you can examine something in further details uh, drill down allows you to do that so this is a simple table now let us just create a matrix we can change the size and just keep it on the left hand side for reference here we got product category order quantity and profit we have turned the title bar off so simply we can see this uh, useful information next just click uh, on creating a matrix it is next to the table and you can see here we got three options for rows columns and values let us drop a few columns from the table or data set sorry uh, we have the states and just put it into the rows product category into the column and values into profit one thing uh, you can uh, note here that you may put multiple measure or dimension into either of these things so as in tables we have added three columns into the values you can add multiple values in rows multiple values in columns as well as multiple uh, values in values and here it is we have just added profit to values and you can see you got one column for profit Later on, we can add uh, some more information like total price. You can find that a uh, few of the cells are empty. So we don't have any corresponding data for that particular cell. Maybe that is the case. But you can add more columns here. Okay, so just try to add total price into the values. And here you can see the total price as well as profit is added to each column. So here you got column and you got sub columns. So matrix is an advanced computation. Sometimes you have multi-dimensional data. You can use matrix to represent. Just as a mathematical matrix, you get three dimension, four dimension, or a higher dimension computation. You can represent using matrix, where something table, simple table, cannot fit a lot of data. Just go to the formatting tab to format the matrix as you format other charts. You can have a minimal styling, contrast, alternative rows, sparsing or a flashing rows. Let us choose a flashing rows. So it looks uh, visually good. So here on the left hand side, we got a small table and on the right hand side, we got a detailed matrix. Sometimes there could be information that cannot be simply represented with a pie or the bar chart or any other chart. You may require matrices. Still, it can allow you to drill down or drill up and add filters and advanced functionalities. You can add slicers and anything else that you will be learning in the coming lessons. So here you learned how to create a table and a matrix in Power BI. So this can allow you to represent data. Try to create your own matrix, multi-dimensional matrix or a simple two-dimension table. Try to add different values, uh, measures or dimensions into multiple columns, rows and values. You can use a data set and just try to create this thing. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. In the previous lesson, we have just created a table and a matrix. And now in this lesson, you're going to learn about implementing this drill down functionality on table and matrix. So let's start. So what is drill down? Simply drill down allows you to access deeper level of hierarchies of a data set visually. So when we click on a particular row or column, say technology uh, in table, it will update the matrix only for the technology in the similar way if we choose say california uh, from the matrix it will only highlight the relevant information in table so if you want to dive deeper into a particular category or entity a particular thing and get a relevant information for that thing we can find out just keep it simple say the product category order quantity or profit details are shown in the table uh, and by default it shows the entire state or from the united states and canada all the profit combined together in the food category cosmetics and medicines technology but if we select a particular state it will only update uh, information for that state in the same way if we choose a particular category it will update 
uh, only this particular category information in the matrix. Here, let us create one more uh, chart. This time, uh, a column, uh, a pie chart, and just put a country into the legend and order quantity into the values. So here we find a simple pie chart, and we can also format it further, but let it be. Uh, we are focused on drilling down. So here we got three charts. Uh, these are connected together with each other because we have the similar data set. And when we click, say, select uh, Canada, it will show you the information only for the Canada. Both tables and matrices are updated and will show you only the information for the Canada. So this is a drill down technique based on multiple charts. Say if you select a food, it will only show the food data for US and Canada. So in the pie chart, you find this relevant information highlighted on, on the right hand side in the matrix, you find the particular information is highlighted. So if you want to focus or target on the particular category, say geographical location or a particular category product category you can just focus on that product line okay so you may update with the relevant information say if you are making a presentation with your peers uh, colleagues you have a data sales data for different states and say somebody popped up and said uh, let me focus just on California into the technology sector so you can select just uh, hold the control click control key uh, on the keyboard and the single click or you can select multiple columns or categories with the mouse and control so this way you can focus on a combination of things okay it will show you the relevant information it makes life very easy and drill down is really useful rather than creating different tables or different charts for a particular solution it may take time but here you drill down in the real time without uh, requiring to create separate charts and you can just focus on things that matter try to create this thing on your own keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating an amazing uh, chart in power bi that's ribbon chart so here we need a new data set uh, we are just importing this grocery price uh, excel data set you can use any other data source like database or web data or PDF or a different format of data. You got a lot of formats and you can use cloud services and other services as well. So here just uh, refer to the data set that are you using and hit the load option. So what is a ribbon chart? A ribbon chart is a creative way of visualizing the stack data that you can also create with a stack column chart but here uh, we want to align them based on the ranks uh, we want to see the flow of the ranks say sometimes one category is on the top so you can get maximum sales or something from uh, that category on the next month or next quarter it has changed the rank so we can find the flow of orders or rank of this stacked information here data category uh, are arranged on the highest value so highest values on the top and it changes with the access you provide here we will be using the time so you can find the ribbon chart on the right hand side for the second row in the visualization tab here you can create this uh, ribbon chart visualization and you you got a little idea how it will going to be look and here just uh, navigate through these options you got access and just put date into access and price into the values so values is a measure based on that we will get rank for the orders next uh, we take the date for the access and for the legend we got products so it consists of three dimensions uh, the x-axis is based on a date you can take a different time frame here it is showing the annual time frame you can just cross it to remove it so when you cross year it will show the quarter when you cross the quarter it will show you the monthly data so it depends on if you have a annualized data you can use that if you have a monthly or quarterly data you can use it if you have a daily data you can have this thing you can also convert it to weekly information and so on so this is a flow 
and you can go to the format tab to add some details like turn the data labels on so it will add the data labels uh, that are relevant say order quantity or here we got the price it will show you the sum of price by default you can change it to average account or any other parameter uh, you can also find the median or other things you can increase the text size of uh, data labels as well as title or uh, legion anything else here we got four different categories bread grapes milk and oranges and you can find the data arranged on the five month cycle on the first month we got uh, uh, this milk to be on the top and it is constantly on the top based on the price okay so it is on the top uh, first rank and the second rank uh, we got this bread and it is on second rank for three months and then it's dropped with the formatting you can also turn the spacing between these ribbons you can increase the spacing you can decrease the spacing based on your requirement on the third category we got uh, this uh, oranges and the grapes we can find this thing and it changes the values you can also add an image to the background or you can turn the mode into the dark mode or the background you can change the styling you got other formatting options as well like shadows highlights tooltips you can also add some information in the tooltip if you got multiple measures like order quantity profit uh, loss uh, anything any more numerical value you can also add on into the tooltips or you can also show it into the values just remember you can add multiple columns or uh, into the values or any other axis you can also change the color as you want let's change the color of orange to orange and we find the grapes has successfully grown so initially the grapes was in the last category and in the preceding or uh, coming months it grew to the third and the second category so we can identify the trend the flow of rank here uh, which category jump to the higher rank and which category move to the lower rank you can simply identify uh, with this ribbon chart so sometimes you may require a ribbon chart say if you're running a company or you have multiple units or you may have uh, different streams uh, you can find where the traffic is coming it can be used for analyzing uh, traffic any kind of content that can be categorized and has to represent in the flow or the ranked manner so this is how you create a ribbon chart and here you can do comparative analysis it can be also used for applying drill down functionality you can change uh, simply change the values here uh, on the axis we got date if you want to see the quarterly data we can just turn the year off and we can find this quarterly data so you can find the quarterly data uh, you can find the monthly data daily and the weekly if you require so based on the data set you can also combine it with other charts to have a drill down functionality you can create it to uh, create an amazing dashboard for driving insights or you can create multiple worksheets for different versions so just try creating a ribbon chart uh, just use any kind of data you have that you want to arrange in the trend manner you want uh, in terms of order or the ranks in the systematic way and you want to have this flow don't be confused with the sankey chart it is different from the ribbon chart uh, this is a ribbon chart it has a different purpose and the sankey chart is a different thing okay so ribbon chart allows you to show information visually uh, with ranks and the orderly fashion and with the sankey chart you have the flow from one direction to other dimension uh, say you can use for the climate change data say the source and destination you can connect those information but ribbon chart don't do that thing so sankey chart is a more advanced version in power bi we don't get sankey chart by default and it's really used uh, for simple corporate presentations you can use a ribbon chart for a lot of functionalities 
it is attractive because a lot of tools out there like Tableau don't have a Sankey, uh, don't have a this ribbon chart by default. But Power BI support this thing, so if you are a Power BI user, you should appreciate this thing. So just create a ribbon chart and visualize your information uh, creatively. Try to create this thing on your own. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you are going to learn about creating a waterfall chart in Power BI. So let's start with this. So we have created a new worksheet and just rename it to waterfall chart. And then go to visualization option and you got multiple charts. Just select this waterfall chart on the left row. And you have to paste uh, some values here. Just put order date into the category once you have this waterfall chart and we can draw profit into values so it will create a simple waterfall chart that will show us the increasing value decreasing value and the total so as we can see year on year uh, this profit has been increased and the total sum is shown so waterfall will just add on uh, if there is a loss there is a profit both are shown in the total and they reflect so waterfall is used to show the flow of uh, say profit or loss it is a basic chart uh, that can be used to create advanced candlestick chart to track stock price and such more things so here uh, you can select a particular day month year it depends on your choice let's keep the year thing here then you can drop some uh, values like product category into the breakdown so it will just divide the segments into the categories or something that you provide so for the technology for medicines food toys it will show you the flow so you can see uh, there's an increase of profit uh, in 2016 for technology segment and in the 2017 17 there is an increase in different category and later in the 2019 there has been loss so you can find in which year you are net profitable and in which year you are in net loss it depends okay so waterfall will show you the flow it will just sum up profit and loss here the decrease in value or loss is shown in the red color uh, the increase or profit is shown in the green and the blue is the sum of things here okay so year on year we can see this thing so you can just go to format tab to format something you can also change the color you could add some information to the tooltip if you want to show uh, an individual individual bar chart you can also align it with the country so uh, we can see in 2017 we got we generated profit from Canada but we incurred some loss in United States and so on you can deduce uh, some different kind of information with a, bar, a simple waterfall chart waterfall will aggregate the profit loss uh, in terms of years categories or a different country or geographical value it can be used as a uh, can be used with different charts to create a combined report so you can see uh, if you read some financial statements with the different companies they generally prefer to show year on year profit or quarterly profit or earnings or the revenue increase in terms of waterfall chart so waterfall chart is highly incorporated in the financial statements and if you have to do uh, work in the financial sector uh, maybe this chart would be for your use so just practice this chart uh, try to read it try to uh, interpret it accommodately and just get a practice the best way to do this thing is use some different data sets try to combine it place it on the power bi dashboard and just to start playing with this so just create a waterfall chart very easily efficiently you can change uh, the profit with the loss the cost any numerical measure you can also create a custom uh, measure or a cal new calculated field as well so this is how you create a simple waterfall chart you could add various informations can be used with different charts and can be used in financial as well as different sectors so just try to create 
this chart and integrate it with other charts in Power BI. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Hi, welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about inserting a back button in your Power BI charts as well as reports. So let's start with this. Uh, we have created multiple charts and we want to create a back button. So just go to insert buttons and you will find various kinds of buttons. On the top option, you got left arrow. You can also use the back button. You can use the right arrow, but we'll be using both the arrows. So with the back arrow as, the, as well as forward arrow would be useful. Okay. So here, just uh, drop it towards the left side, lower left corner. Uh, you can scale it up, uh, adjust the size. So here uh, we have multiple worksheets to work upon and we can navigate in different ways. Uh, we can just click on uh, the worksheet name uh, from the lower options or you can just add some buttons. There are various kinds of navigation buttons. You can also use uh, information button, page navigation, the back buttons and much more. So just try these things. Uh, you can also change the color of your arrow. You could add text. You could change the font type. You could add some impressions and let's let us do this thing. So here uh, we have the button text. Uh, we can just write some text here uh, like a previous page. Let us write previous page so that uh, users will be aware that this button will lead them to the previous worksheet. Okay, you can change the size or you can just set a vertical alignment to bottom. Uh, just next to the arrow because uh, we want our words to be clearly visible or you can set your own preferences. Then we can perform uh, various formatting options. You can go to format tab and use a different option as you like. You can change the color of your arrow, uh, your text, you can change the font or you can also set a border here. Uh, you can go to the fill option and you can just make it on hover. Let's choose a font of our choice. You can have a different font, Arial, Times New Roman or any custom font you can also add. It. You can set the outline because if you want your button to look like a button, computer button, you can set an outline. And also you can also set, set a shadow. Okay, so it will just have a feel like a, a real button, mechanical button. Or you can just uh, go to fill and you can set the fill on and fill will change the color of uh, your button and based on the preference. Say if you want to change its color by default, it will have the same color all the time. But if you change the color on hover, so once your mouse hovers around that button area, it will change the color like this. You have seen this uh, on various websites like uh, in the web pages, you might see in various buttons that respond in this way. They change the color and this thing. So this kind of action you can also add in the insert button. You could have more options. Then after you are done with this, you can also add an image as a background instead of using any color. Then uh, you got more options. You can but finally just uh, go to the action type and turn it on because we, a button it has need to have an action. So here we are looking for an action. Just make it on and expand it to get over the ops option. You got various options such as back. Uh, bookmark, drill through, page navigation, Q&A and URL. For now just select the back button. So it will work as a back button. Otherwise you can if you want to add a URL that can be used as a bookmark you can also use it or you can add some text that can be displayed as a tooltip like uh, you can have a visual heading like go to the previous page. So once you hover around it or you are just about to click it will show you this tool tip go to previous page and once you just click it here or you can have the control click it will lead to the desired page the back button is working it will just 
move you one page backward so if you copy this uh, back button script it will uh, or paste it in a different worksheet it will navigate to the previous worksheet not the current one say here uh, we got a map dashboard worksheet and if we click the back button it will lead to page 2 worksheet that is just for uh, one page back and say if we paste it into the include and exclude it will uh, the work back button will lead to map dashboard in the same way so you can also add the next button it will be also the similar way uh, you can have the right arrow and just add this action uh, and you can add a page navigation provide the name of the worksheet and it will work so just try to create this simple actions or buttons you also already know how to create charts and splicers and filters and it is better to have some advanced functionalities like buttons and this could be used in various scenarios so ju just try to add uh, some of the buttons into your visualization charts in power bi keep learning and keep moving ahead hey friend welcome to this lesson where you're going to learn about getting started with aws quick sites so let's start with this uh, on the aws panel uh, just move to the services panel or you can just search quick site in this option so there are multitude of services on aws and we just need to navigate to quick site so quick site will allow you to create different kinds of visualization charts and do a lot of data preparation and complete data science work on the cloud so let's sign in for quick site you have to sign in for quick site with a separate account so you have created a aws account it would not uh, automatically log in into this quick site so you may choose the option for the beginners and the learners it is better to go for the standard edition it would be free so you can choose this thing uh, for getting started you need uh, some kind of authentication method uh, you would require IAM identity and access management federated identity so just keep the default options intact and you just need to provide quick site account name so just provide a account name here you can provide any information and you have to provide the email id for notification and other things you can allow access to different kinds of services on cloud uh, it could be amazon redshift you can choose rds s3 im we have already selected so for those who don't know what is im so im is an authentication uh, service that is provided on aws so whenever you create some service or service instance on the cloud you need an iam role or policy attached to that thing so you could have multiple members of the team working on your project side by side so it could be a corporate project where you could require this thing for business analyst and data science projects and other so on so you can uh, have a team here you can also select s3 bucket if you want to store some data or you can fetch it but you can add it on later on it's not required at the moment so just keep the default things here and once you're done just hit the finish button to get started with this thing if there is some error just go back and just revert it to default settings if you find you can change the region i'm using north virginia us east you can choose any option so you have to make sure that your account name for the quick site must match with the format uh, there's no underscore supported or special characters are very limited use so only hyphen is allowed here so you can use this thing so once it is created you can log into quick site through aws Earlier QuickSight was a different corporation, different product that was acquired by Amazon or AWS and that's why we find this thing. It is very advanced software where you can create uh, a lot of things, data visualization charts to be very complex for finding insights, critical insights that you're learning in the coming lessons. So don't worry for this. So you have to just go to the QuickSight. Uh, you can consider this lesson as a installation part 
but actually it is not an installation you just need to configure a few basic things uh, before navigating through this thing so here you can go to the quick site account and you can simply log in it will take only this much time for if you are doing it for the first time so once you are done it will automatically just move it to there you can just explore some few of the basic informations that is there otherwise just ignore it you will also learn this thing so here this is the primary dashboard for quick site here you got multiple options on the left hand side you got different kinds of categories and you got uh, the analysis that has been created these are the four analysis that has been created by default for you to understand how things work uh, once you select any one of them it will create a visualization dashboard uh, where you have all the options here uh, it has created six seven eight eight different kind of charts the pie chart stack bar charts and different line charts and other kind of charts and you will learn to navigate this thing so there, there are a lot of options here you can con configure or customize a lot of things here uh, for finding critical insights from the data set so you will learning how to upload a data set how to prepare a data set for data preparation and sorting this thing data modeling that is an important part of data science you will also learn to create a lot of visualization charts and drive some insights from these things amazing visualization chart and you can also download this thing on pdf and share with your peers and teammates you can allow other various kind of data sources like uh, s3 or you can upload some file in format of csv or excel you can link with a cloud database like redshift or traditional database like sql and different things here so this will be a complete data science project you can create a lot of things business intelligence data science data visualization a lot of things with quick sight so keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about importing a data set or uploading a data set on aws quick sight and you will learn to create your first bi report and visualization charts using quick sight so let's start with this so this is our default dashboard when you log into quick sight uh, you got few default visualization dashboards already created for you to analyze and now it's time to upload something here so just choose a new analysis and you have to create a new data set so let's create a data set here you can see there are various options that you can use to import data set on quick sight you can use the s3 bucket you can have the oracle uh, sql server aurora db maria db you can also fetch data set from github twitter or different platforms okay so there's a wide range of options you can use it uh, using aws services or you can use the custom services so for now we are just uploading a file uh, that is generally a csv or you can upload excel file so just upload and select the worksheet name and you can hit select to create a visualization chart so this is how uh, we get uh, some data here you can you get uh, two different options one you can edit or preview data and then you can visualize so let us first visualize it so when you create the visualize option you will get this visualization dashboard created for you and here we can create multiple charts we can add it uh, you can duplicate different kind of charts you can create a lot of charts here uh, such as pie chart ring chart tree map line stack uh, map chart or a different kind of charts the got charts that can be used for a lot of purposes so for creating a chart we need to drop different kind of fields into the group or the value option so let us drop product into the group and price into the value so what is value type value that is represented using green color uh, will show you the measure or numerical values and the group is generally and the alphabetic values uh, that is generally noun names of the place categories and such things okay so if you have some numerical value it could show you the sum of values uh, various kinds of aggregation could be there some average count 
count distinct mean median mode such things you can show by default it is set to sum so once you put any field into the value option it will take the sum of the column and will show you on the screen or uh, with a help of chart so this is how it creates as this service is on cloud and it may take a few time few moment for creating a few charts so in the meanwhile we can create some more charts here so let us create a bar chart here we will drop uh, the same options here so this is pie chart has been created here we have four different categories of the product milk bread grapes and oranges and that has been shown into the pie chart and we have the bar chart also ready and this is how you create different kinds of visualization charts in quick sight so try to create this thing on error keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you are going to learn about creating a tree map chart in quick sight and you will also learn to customize or edit some existing charts so let's start with this so we have created two different charts uh, one is a pie chart and another is a bar chart you can create a duplicate of any of these chart and remove the values or you can create a new chart from fresh so here just uh, try to create some new chart uh, you can you choose from various types of options that are there um, for tree map just click uh, on the tree map option and here just add some values so here we add date into the group by category uh, it is a date field so it won't be a number and then we add a margin into size and price into the color so we have three different parameters into the tree map so the size of the tree map entities would be defi defined by a margin and color would be derived from price so brighter the color and uh, softer the color they will be monotonous you will see it will load in a few moment in the meanwhile you can customize other charts as well so if you have multiple charts on a dashboard you may try to customize things accordingly so here on the pie chart we have some values we can see the milk product uh, milk and different products here oranges grapes so let us align them so oranges and the orange color it is uh, orange is currently shown in the green color okay so we want to convert this orange pie into the orange color we can change the values by just right clicking the chart and you can select the color of individual parameter individual category so let's change the color of milk and we can change to a different data colors there are a lot of options you can choose from so this is not a vital step for data visualization you have already created a visualization but uh, visually if you are presenting anything visually it has to do with colors so choosing a right color appropriate color uh, regarding your business intelligence and what insights you are driving is important okay so if you are showing some results for the sales result the profit could be shown in green color loss could be shown in the red color this is a well known figure everybody uses so you can turn it into that colors if you have kpis and other things as well and these are all thing so you can customize and once you're done you may get uh, some different charts loaded on the right hand side we also have some categories uh, say for example here we have four different categories for the horizontal bar charts uh, you can choose colors in a different way say if you have four categories you can choose four different colors for each of them or you can use a single color as it is shown here or you may to, if you want to highlight a particular category you can paint it in a different color say here we have four different category if you want to change the color of milk you can change it okay so now we have the tree map chart displayed it has been processed and here it is you can export this thing in pdf and download it that we can view later on and uh, you can always go back to the dashboard panel in the quick site uh, when you log into quick site and here we have different projects so just go to the grocery repository one that we have created here report here 
and here we got three different columns so as said for the tree map chart we can find these things okay so here we can have downloaded the PDF so first you have to export your report into PDF and then you can download it and you can view it with using any visual editor and so on so you can use it on a different platform as well you can share it offline if you want to drive some critical insights you can share it with your teammates and anything else like projections planning for the future driving some insights this thing can be combined and published on a various formats on a magazines or booklets research papers anywhere if you want to use it okay so visualization is not just part for uh, a business or a company it can be used by entrepreneurs freelancers anyone for personal finance well, variety of things okay so here we have created these things so try to create these charts and customize them keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about data preparation where you would be able to customize your data set not your charts data set so you would be able to edit your data set change values create calculated fields and a lot of things that is there so for data science data modeling and data preparation is a crucial step so quicksight also empower you to prepare your data so for that purpose you do just need to load your data set uh, either via csv by uploading a file or you can use any of the available connectors s3 athena rds or ship anything and here you got two options the first option was to visualize after you hit the select option the second option on the left hand side is edit and preview data so earlier we selected the select option and visualize now we just need to go with the edit option so once you hit the edit option it will create a different kind of dashboard it is not a dashboard for creating charts it will show you the entire data set here uh, in different columns and rows as you can find in the excel file format and on the left hand side you got multiple options on the top side you have option for calculated field uh, click here to create a calculated field so what is a calculated field so you will learn it in detail in the coming lessons but for now just uh, get it a calculated field uh, is a new column that you create in your table it is based on a formula okay say you can create a number of rows serial number you can add some value subtract some value perform various options here next there is a filter so filter will allow you to customize the data set and view it here so if you have say thousand of rows and you just want to show five rows so you can show this thing okay you can find a specific value here you can drill into the data set so you can decide here what kind of data will go to the visualization phase and what will be cleaned out so this is also called as a data cleaning step data preparation is also called as a data cleaning so here uh, we can customize it based on the serial number don't worry uh, you will also learn about filters creating filters in the coming lessons so this is just a quick recap here so here uh, you can select various options there are various options say you can say the greater or equal value you can define based on the number say here we have serial number one two various number of rows say hundred of rows and if you want to show say row number five to ten or four to eight it could be displayed here so you have to define the minimum value and the maximum value of the serial number in the same way if you say have a data for different persons record you can decide um, on the age criteria 18 to 35 36 to 48 and so on different age category you can classify people in age category you can also create filters like male and female geography for the country city anything based on the product anything say so you can filter out data so this is how you can do this thing and more you can customize more information here we are using a single sheet you can use multiple spreadsheet and create a connection in here as you can see in the data panel we have got only sheet one you could have multiple sheets and you can combine them together 
to create a joins as you use in the SQL table. People who have a background in database, they will understand it. You can create joins and such things. So it could be useful for advanced scenarios. And for right now, we can also change the data type of the field. So here we have multiple columns, say price. We can change it from decimal to integer, integer to decimal and so on. Sometimes uh, say things like if you have the country information or city information, these are the location, geographical locations and they have been maybe due to some error, they could be defined as a string. So you can change the value. If you customize it to country specific, it will know what that it is a country. And when you want to create a geographical chart, it would be very easy for you to create this thing. It will automatically detect. Okay. So after you are done with this, you can hit the visualization option on the right hand side. Uh, you can save and create a visualization chart. As you already know how to create a visualization chart, it will have a different dashboard. So in QuickSight, you have two different kind of dashboards. One for data preparation, modeling, data cleaning, and one for creating visualization chart. So sometimes if you have a very small chunk of data for practice purpose, you can directly go to the visualization step or in general professionals use to first prepare and then visualize. So on the cloud, if you're working on a, some decent project, you may be having a, a good amount of people on your team. So some people would be focused on creating a data preparation level modeling and some would be deployed on creating visualization chart driving insights. So you could have some role in between or you could be having managing all these things. Okay. And you could have multiple reports, multiple visualizations. So multiple people could be deployed on a different level. So that is how yeah, your work would be done on the cloud. The data science projects is done here. So try to create these things on your own. Explore data preparation, create visualization charts in QuickSight. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Welcome back friend. Here in this lesson, you're going to learn about creating a calculated field in QuickSight. So let's start with this. In the earlier lesson, you learned how to do data preparation, how data preparation works and various options there. Uh, in this lesson, we will be focused on creating a calculated field. So just have some data set or create a new analysis. And here we will learn different kinds of functions that you can use to create a different column. So calculated field is simply a custom column or a new column that you want to create that is not there in your data set or table. And it could be based on a certain formula that is mathematical formula, or it could be based derived from different columns. So here we have multiple columns here and we can take a few of them. So here we have a profit column a product category, product ID, product name, different uh, options in here. And here just go to add calculated field and this will direct to this option. You can directly write the code for creating a calculated field. It will be a simple one line code or you can use different functions that are available here. So here we will be using ceiling function. So seal, C-E-I-L would be routine to calculate the ceiling of a function. So here we use the profit and we will create a ceiling of profit. So just for example, there is a ceiling and floor, two mathematical functions. See here, if you have a decimal value or value say, it will round off it. So ceiling will round off to the upper threshold while floor will round off to lower threshold. Say here, if you have 72 as value, Upper threshold could be 75 and lower threshold could be 70. If you write ceiling, it will convert to upper threshold. Okay. So here we can have, you can add something like here ceiling plus one. You can add one subtract. You can use various operations as you like. You can divide one column with a different column. So it will perform actions on the row basis. So it will go on an individual row compare the values in two different columns and will perform actions. So here just create some real values. So in our data set, we have the values for profit. And if you want to calculate taxes for from the profit values, you can just write a code for that. So here just calculate the ceiling function 
and here just assume we have a tax rate of 10 percent so it will calculate the taxation from the profit so it will show you okay so it will create a new column you can provide the name of this column tax from profit and just write the code ceiling profit divide by 10 so here uh, this is sometimes there could be some error for you uh, so you have to just check the, the format of this thing you have to put the column name into the parenthesis the function using braces and so on there is no need for any semicolon in here uh, this is not a programming language this is very simple so don't worry if you don't have a background in computer programming it would be easy for you if you're a business person or a business analyst purpose uh, and you don't know the programming it would be fine you just need to understand what these functions would do okay so here just try to do one more thing uh, we learned how to do operations on a measure or a numerical value and let's learn how to do it in a dimension so here we are using the concat function so concat will concatenate or combine multiple strings together so what are the strings here we have two different columns product id product category and product name we have three different columns in here uh, product id is numerical alphabetic and product category is alphabetic string and product name is a string so we can combine these three things together into a single column so this is generally a useless thing but i will show you how to do this thing okay so just write concat function within the parenthesis just provide the name of individual columns or the field you can say and hit the save button so this is how you have to provide this thing if you want to combine multiple columns you can combine them together okay so just explore various functions that are there and these function will be compatible enough to uh, allow you to do a lot of data preparation data cleaning and data modeling on the data set okay so it will be compatible with different things so here just write this thing we have created this thing once you're done hit the save option it will be reflected just back to your quick side dashboard here on the right hand side we got this product info and it show the value of these things combined so currently the space is less so it won't be displayed here but if you create a chart or you can expand it to find the information in there you could create more things like if you want to extract name from the email address you could do this thing and you want to combine these things so try to perform various uh, operations here create calculated fields in quick sight keep learning and keep moving ahead now moving forward by creating some more calculated fields you can hit the three dots uh, to delete a field you can edit them uh, customize the code here and the functions that we can use or you can create a new column from scratch so three things covered you can create a new column you can edit a different existing column you can delete a column okay so this will empower your things uh, in the data cleaning and data preparation phase so just hit to add calculated field option here we are going to create uh, two different columns uh, profit per unit and price per unit so just name this new column as profit per unit and we're using the ceiling function you can use a different function if you want to calculate the average or a different value you can use you can count you can do a different operation based on your data set and requirement so here just write a simple code seal uh, would be used for ceiling function uh, in the bracket put different values here we put profit that is divided by order quantity or divide you use the slash so it will be represented and here we got uh, this column you can calculate on the right hand side profit per unit so we got profit and we got unit these two columns are there the unit sold uh, order quantity simply we divide the order quantity by the profit so it will fetch the profit per unit so you can calculate these things that can be used for your visualization fees to make things very easy so for a person who is creating visualization chart need not to do these things and if you are responsible solely for all the things 
this is a step where you have to prepare your data so you can it would be not very difficult you can prepare your data as well as visualize you should learn both of these things it may depend on your job role so you can focus on a particular thing professionally while you should have a knowledge of both these things so here we can create a, a similar function for calculating the price per unit so here we will divide the total price by order quantity you can calculate age of a person you can use a different formula for creating a different kind of calculated field you get it how to create a calculated field in quick sight uh, using few, few simple steps and based on different columns you can create a visualization charts you can also add some filters that you will learn later on that can be added uh, to improvise the data that you want to show in the chart sometimes you don't want some garbage values and some excess amount of data you want to focus filters would be for that use so stay motivated keep learning and keep moving ahead hi welcome back friend here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating filters and exclude a list in a ws quick site so let's start with this so here we have our data set as you can see on the right hand side we have the complete columns and rows information and on the left hand side we have various options to customize our data set to prepare our data set or to perform various options moderations so here we just need to select a field or column to convert it into the excluded field so just select anything here we will select a invoice number and we want some more options so just click uh, triple dots to expand and here you have to select the exclude field option so once you hit this exclude field option it will be converted into the excluded field so this column won't be displayed into the data set and if you save and go to the visualization step this uh, column won't be available so it will aggregate your column it would uh, optimize the storage space and sometimes you in your data set if it is very large you want to remove certain things you can do so next is uh, filters filters allow you to customize various things so here we have selected you can convert anything to filter in the same way you do excluded field so here we have selected the country filter and here we have two options either we can include a certain certain thing in the list or we can exclude so first uh, just select with the include or you can select exclude so here we want to include canada into the country field so once you select this thing it will only display the records that have canada in the country field okay not other countries would be included and if you choose to exclude it it will show all other data that don't have canada in the country field so you can apply this condition definitely you can add multiple excluded fields and multiple filters in your quick site data preparation step you can create a lot of them to fine grade your things you can refine your data set and make it suitable so that it can be used to create proper and uh, useful business insights or visualization charts next uh, we can have date information as well so here we have selected order date that consists of information for the date and here we got three different options we can select the between after and before so when you select the between you have to select a range of values is starting and end date uh, it will only show the records that are just between the starting and end date you may choose to select uh, either select or deselect the starting and end date if you check down that thing so it would be it would include the starting date or otherwise it could be excluding it you may define this uh, date field based on the calendar it would be easy for you and just hit apply if you want to select say if we have say records and we want to show the records from 1st september uh, 2016 based on the time we can also find grade it with the time granularity 
we can select it to second minute hour and time basis different basis if you have a milli second time information you can also add it but it's not generally used so for default it is there then uh, you may choose to select a date afterwards so in that case you have to just select a date after which the record would be displayed a starting date you have to define otherwise if you select the before you have to decide the end date in the same way you can have it inclusive or exclusive set so you may select a checkbox or deselect a checkbox for including a start or end date based on your requirement so this is how we can customize our data set using filters and excluded list uh, we can have multiple kind of filters in the same way you could add them you could remove them and once you are done just hit the save and visualize option on the top right side and it will go to the visualization panel don't forget to hit the apply option uh, so that it would be reflected back to your data set and it could be used here you could add more filters we have multiple column field here if you have a large amount of data set that has multiple columns you can use you can also create a different calculated fields and you can also use those calculated fields as a filter as anything else okay say for example if you have age information you know uh, the date of birth of various peoples uh, that are there in the record uh, you may find the age you can create a calculated field that will calculate the age based on the date of birth and the current date it will subtract find a difference it will create a new column that will have records for that thing and you can use it as a filter so this kind of things can be done here here we select a, a different uh, filter product name and you can pass on multiple values in the list say if you want to show values like including sanitizer and earphones into the product name you may want to select earlier we used canada as an example we selected only one country name for including and excluding and here we can select multiple options as well so it is a list you have to just hit enter each time you have to write each different category name one by one in different lines so this is how it works and just do it uh, keep learning and keep moving ahead stay motivated hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating map charts in aws quick site so let's start with this so we have opened our data set and we have created multiple filters and excluded list so before heading towards visualization panel uh, let us customize some filters you may add or delete a filter or you can edit them based on the requirement for now let me just disable the product name filter and order date if you want to keep or you can change the date range based on your requirement so here you can customize your filters before heading towards a visualization panel it will be best practice to just look at the filters and excluded list or calculated field that you have created before getting into the visualization option so in that case you will have a picture about your data so you can clarify what you want to visualize and once you're done just hit save and visualize and here we got this visualization dashboard where we can create multiple kind of charts here we are going to create a bar chart and a map chart so where there are various visual types as you can find here and based on the different fields and the columns from the data set we can create different charts so here we take uh, two values country and profit country is a dimension that has alphabetic information name of the country and profit is a measure that have a numerical value that can be aggregated based on the sum average and such on if you want to create a map chart just click on the one of these map fields uh, you can select this thing you can click on the globe icon or the map icon so I'm taking the area map and here uh, it shows North America and here we have our country's information based on the Canada and USA so these two countries are highlighted the rest of the countries are not highlighted because they are not in our data set right now 
so that's it you can customize it you can apply conditional formatting by going to the more details option three dots you can format these things so just go to conditional formatting option here we can format something based on the parameter here we take the profit measure and we change the background color and we can customize the property by default it is showing the information in dark and light blue color you can change the value of colors so here just select a condition like greater than and provide some value change the color to red uh, and here we provided zero value try to apply hit and here it is so any country that has a value of profit more than zero would be converted to red so in this case Canada and USA both have some information and thus both are converted to red but what happens if we want to divide them based on the certain range you can do so okay so once we put some range here like 30,000 uh, then it changed so as you can see here uh, we got more profit from USA compared to Canada the profit is generated for the same this data set and here if you have multiple countries you can choose to go with them otherwise if you want to choose a gradient you can use some kind of gradient if you like otherwise if you have multiple values you can just choose a range and the condition could be greater than greater than equals to less than less than equals to equals or between certain range you can provide this thing and once you provide this range your things would be colored if you want to remove this condition you can simply clear it or close you can add multiple conditions like else would be conditioned so it works like an if else loop people who have a background in computer programming would understand it very clearly uh, here we have if else condition if the first condition is found to be true it will apply the color that is field otherwise if first condition is not true then it will check the second condition and if second condition is satisfied it will change the color otherwise it will go on further so here it is so we got one condition that we have added to this map chart you can create uh, multiple kinds of map charts and once we hover around our map country it will show some information in the tooltip you could add some more information in the tooltip as well you can duplicate you can hit actions you can find various options in here and if you want to customize the theme the layout of your dashboard on the right hand side you got multiple options like visualize filter parameters theme actions just go to the themes and here just select the midnight theme it will convert to the dark theme you, you can choose a brighter color there are four or five by default themes that you can go with so if you feel like uh, power saving or you want to have some dark kind of theme you can use it so here we have this thing a uh, dark theme and we can change the color of individual bars based on the selection and here it is so it's better to change the color of bar uh, that matches with the map so here Canada is changed to magenta or pink color and US is shown in blue color so you can clearly identify in both charts. there's a color harmony between multiple charts so if you're tra trying to create a dashboard and report try to implement this color harmony multiple charts having same values should be categorized in similar colors so keep learning and keep moving ahead stay motivated hi welcome back friends here in this lesson you're going to learn about creating pivot tables in quick sight so let's start with this when you have uh, a large set of data and you want to summarize your data in form of tabular format using columns and rows in a very concise manner you can use pivot table you can also customize it using conditional formatting and change the color of individual cells for creating a pivot table you just go to the visual types and here uh, on the third row right hand side you got the pivot table so just select it to create a pivot table chart 
and here you would require to provide the name of the column rows and other parameters so here we can have a uh, different kind of charts when you are creating a dashboard you could add different charts such as pie map pivot table and much more you can create duplicate uh, of an individual chart in that case the field information would be intact so just click the feed wells and here you get options rows columns and values so in the rows we have country uh, we can add state information as well so it will first divide it into countries then categorize based on the states and then we have the third parameter that is values so here we got uh, profit we can change the aggregate function from sum to count to average to distinct mean median percentile standard deviation you got various options so based on your requirement you can find the minimum of a value maximum of a value count you by default people use sum in general case because we want to add the profit we want to add the sales we want to add the numbers if you want to find the average you can easily find then you can also add some more information like we have added tax from profit so it has created another column for that so here we got four columns country states profit and tax from profit states are categorized based on the country name so they are arranged in the country way so first uh, six seven states are from the same country like canada and then followed by all the states from usa we leave the column tab intact uh, if you want to drop some information here in your field here you can add but it will make things uh, look very complex and most of the cells would be empty uh, so it's better to reduce the amount of empty cells by just not using this option we want to have the concise view of the data so this pivot table will allow you to find the information like how much profit is generated from a state of manitoba or british columbia from canada or how much taxation you have to pay so this thing can be fetched this kind of information can be stored very easily using the pivot table this will be visualized so you don't need to dive into deeper you can find the insights very well you can go to the conditional formatting this will allow you to easily grab the things that are informative or relevant so here we want to customize some values or we want to highlight the values that are greater than 100 or greater than 1000 so here we will be using two different color options so we just go to this option condition values just select the greater than and we will choose 100 and change the color to something bright because we are using dark theme we choose to go with the orange color just hit apply and now you find this all the values that fall all the values in taxation that falls above 100 value it will be converted to orange color the cell is displayed as orange color you can add some more conditions like greater than thousand and this time you can change some more color you can add some more color so like for information uh, like uh, if you want to show some kpis kpis can also be summarized using uh, this pivot table so if you want to if you have a large chunk of data and you just want to focus on most important the highest sales or the most important factors from the data set you can just focus there say the states that are driving maximum sales your strategy should be built on those things so you can find you can also find alerts and this kind of information here if you have multiple information it's better to choose the between conditions where you define the starting value and the end value and let's change it to yellow color and then we have the second condition that is orange so above thousand it will be changed to dark orange color and below thousand but greater than hundred it is shown in yellow color so this is where we highlighted the important states our important information from our data set in the same way you can highlight the profit the country name anything that you want to define 
on this thing. Keep learning and keep moving ahead. Try to do this thing on your own.